stream segment. Videos. So, right now, I'm going to be reading you part of James chapter 2. Bear with me. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can his faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothes and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you don't give them what the body needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith, if it doesn't have works, is dead by itself. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I'll show you faith from my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. The demons also believe, and they shudder. Where the frick is my face cam? <laughs> I forgot I turned those off. Oops. Foolish man, are you willing to learn that faith without works is useless? Wasn't Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? You see, the faith was active together with his works, and by works, faith was perfected. So the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and was credited to him for righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that if a man is justified by works and not by faith alone, and in the same way, wasn't Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by a different route in reference to book of Joshua when Joshua sends two spies to the city of Jericho to scope it out because they're about to invade it and destroy it. Pretty pretty interesting. It also has a lot of ties to the chronological or not the chron the bloodline of Christ. And in the same uh, way, now I read that. For just as a body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. All right. Everyone get that? Everyone heard that? Great. Why I want to bring this up is because up until very recently, this is a passage that has always confounded me, made me pause and wonder, think to myself, what exactly does it mean to have faith and works? Why do you need to have faith with works? Why can't you just have faith? And I briefly touched on it last night on stream, but wanted to elaborate a little bit further today because what made me come to realize what it really means to have faith was actually this book. It's specifically about the America, uh, the German church during the Holocaust era with Nazis and all that. But they had this chap chapter in here <clears throat> about Martin Luther, the guy who led the Reformation, and how he had his, he for a long time believed that you had to confess each and every sin that you can conceivably understand as sin and you have to confess it and that he eventually came to the realization that it is by faith faith in christ is all that you need you don't need to confess each and every one of your sins as long as you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that christ is lord you are saved as long as you confess your sins, you don't need to confess each and every one of your sins. And that led him to a whole new confusion. I, I got to mention the guy was just confused trying to figure out what to do with this book because faith and works, James chapter 2, 14 through 26, is just like, wait, what's this? Faith isn't all you got? What's going on? What's happening? And what is also something that is very impactful to me is I have done a lot of research into Islam. And precisely what Islam has that 
Christianity does not is a work based religion. Except for this section in James chapter 2. See, in Islam, it's all based on what you do to get into paradise. In Christianity, it's all about what you believe. Specifically, if you believe that Christ is Lord, he died on the cross and he rose again. That's what saves you. It doesn't matter how many times you do, uh, or how, or, or I should say, how strict you are to Shahira, or if you keep the uh, five pillars of Islam, or if you make your pilgrimage to Mecca. It doesn't matter what you do with that faith. But then, again, here comes James chapter 2. Can his faith save him? Directly from the later half of chapter 2, verse 14. What exactly does faith and works have to do with each other? And up until I read this book, it was something I re was I really struggled with as well. Because it's like, well, we know from the rest of the Bible that, or the New Testament, my mistake, the New Testament, Christ dying on the cross and our faith in him that he did that. That is what caused, or that is what saves us. But then, again, works. And what does that mean to have faith but no works? Is that faith, can it save him? Oh, now give me one second. I want to try to find the exact section. Oh, there's a section in here. Let's play now. I'm not done talking. I'm trying to find the exact section. Ah, oh, here it is. This is from page 60 of this book. Just going to read it straight. You say you believe in God. Good for you. So does Satan. The clear implication of what Jesus or what James is writing is that God expects infinitely more of us than simply saying we believe. Many of those to whom he was writing must have been guilty of this misunderstanding of belief. He makes it clear that the idea that we must only believe or have faith was self-refuting nonsense and explains that it is actually what we do that matters because our actions illustrate what we actually believe. So if we do not have good works we obviously do not have the faith we claim this of course this is of course what deeply bothered luther so we must be clear we cannot earn our way into god's good grace by what we do as though our good works could themselves lift us up from heaven of course not Noth nonetheless what we do shows what we actually believe so if we do not do those things which proceed from real faith, we cannot simply claim to have faith. If we are not doing the works that naturally proceed from our faith, we manifestly have no faith. And so we are in fact not justified before God, which is a chilling thing to consider. That section I just read there, right there. Hit me like a brick of brick walls. Yo, what's up? What's up, Cracker? <laughs> oh. I probably shouldn't have said that. Oh, well. 
Graham crackers are tasteless. Or taste delicious, not tasteless. But the brick of wall was the idea that to have faith, you cannot have to have the faith that you actually have in Christ. You will have the good works associated with that faith. You will be doing good works. You will be seeking after righteousness. You will not be stuck. Well, you can be stuck in rust, but you won't be stuck doing bad things because Christ in you will force you to change. He, it, well, not, no, I missed a quote. It won't force you to change, but you will be compelled to change because of the renewed life you have in your lungs now because of what you believe. And it, it just fits so well because that's exactly what I'm, to use me as an example, that's exactly what I do. I am here talking to you about Christ, sharing the gospel, streaming. Not all the time, but this is what started me on the streaming path. God calling me to minister to chat. And if that is an example of faith and works, I don't know what it is. And that's also why I can understand why I stuck. I, I don't know if you're here right now listening, but I, that's why I can understand why people think Islam is a lot more appealing because they seem to be a lot more <laughs> devote to their faith their religion and that's probably because it's a lot more clear cut what you're supposed to do as a muslim for a christian it's a lot less clear cut it's a lot less but that's because god wants you to choose god wants you to decide for yourself what you do he wants you to have the faith not that he forced on you, but that you chose. He wants you to have the free will to choose whether you accept Jesus or whether you reject him. And to have faith in Christ, in God, means you will have the works of it. Because if you believe, you will have the inkling, the desire to tell others about Christ, to spread the gospel. It's not, not going to be like a pastor or priest, necessarily. You could be called to be a pastor. But, again, myself, I don't particularly feel called right now to be a pastor. I feel called to stream on Twitch, talk to you guys, talk about fight, faith and Christ here on Twitch. And that is where we can begin to understand a little bit about how faith and works coincide in Christian, well, Christendom, Christ. Yeah. So that was the one little thing I wanted to say before I started playing Warhammer. And if you watch this video, if you were listening on this stream, thank you for watching. Catch you in the next one. Please follow my Twitch. Use your Twitch. Use your Prime sub. I mean, what? Nothing. Don't. No, I mean, what? All right.